Welcome to the 47th episode of my series, 50 Days Till 50, where I share different stories from my life, all leading up to my 50th birthday on July 19th. We're going to call this episode the Oprah edition because it's going to embody all things Oprah, every encounter that I ever had, even though I only have one picture to show for it. My first encounter with Oprah happened in my first or second year of college. And I love using this picture because my grandma used to say, I look like Michael Jackson. (laughs) She hated this picture. So I said, let me use this one. (laughs) I went to the show with Ellen, who was a former teacher at the high school that I went to. We became good friends my last year or two of school. She wasn't my teacher, but she was a teacher in the high school. And she taught me how to drive a stick shift so that I could help her make the drive from Springfield to Chicago, which was four hours. This still remains the only time I ever drove a stick shift. I cannot believe I did not crash into something because I literally learned in a couple of hours. I remember we were stopped by the police during our midnight practice session. They let us go without a ticket, but that's how bad I was driving. (laughs) When we finally got to the show, we were sitting in a section that was actually kind of behind Oprah Winfrey, like over in this area. But when it was time to ask questions, that's when Oprah took questions back then, some of the producers came over and asked to make sure my question was good enough to be asked on air. It was, and they said, go and stand by the microphone. Well, when it was time for me to ask the question, Oprah looked at me and said, we're not gonna get to you, we've run out of time. Child, I had made friends with the whole section and they all was booing. (laughs) Oprah was like, what did you do, turn the whole section against me? But then she came over, gave me a hug. I gave her a note with a picture of me in it. And that was that. Now, the second time I met Oprah Winfrey was after my Whitney Houston experience. It was because of one of her awe-inspiring shows that gave me the confidence to send my tape into MTV so that I could be chosen for their show, Fanatic, which connected big stars to their biggest fans. Oprah used to always say a quote that I love, which is, God can dream a dream bigger than you. And I felt like my Whitney Houston experience embodied that. And I wanted to thank her. So I went to this show with a different friend and I'm in the audience. And during one of the commercial breaks, I put 10 fingers up in front of Oprah. And she looked me dead in the eye and said, 10 what? I was like, is she talking to me? (laughs) She really couldn't miss me because I had begged the audience coordinator, David Glor, to sit me in a good seat. So I was sitting like three rows up dead center, looking right directly at Oprah. So when Oprah saw me and said, 10 what? And I said, 10 seconds I would like to have with you before the show is over. Oprah just looked at me and was like, ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. (laughs) I can only imagine that she got that kind of request all the time. So when the show was over, Oprah proceeded to get up and walk toward leaving the set. And I said, "Uh uh-uh, Oprah. (laughs) And Oprah was like, you know, I gotta go. I I have another show to tape, I gotta go. So she turned around and start walking again. And I said, "Uh uh-uh, Oprah. (laughs) She turned around again and she's like, no, really, I have to go. And what you have to understand is the studio was so quiet when this interaction was happening. Like they were looking at Oprah, Oprah was looking at me, Oprah was looking at the audience. And then she just decided to acquiesce and say, okay. She sat down and proceeded to allow me to have the floor. Like what, did I really convince Oprah to sit down and listen to me? I did. Now you know that had God written all over it because this is how Oprah was looking at me when she sat down. Whatever you got to say, it better be good because I done came and sat back down and listened to you. Well, the spirit was indeed with me because everything that I wanted to say came rolling off of my tongue. And when I was finished, the audience erupted in applause. I was not expecting that kind of love from Oprah's audience, but I am so grateful. She then came over to me. I showed her a picture of me and Whitney that said, you will win when you believe at the bottom of it. She thought it was great, gave me a hug. And uh, that was my second encounter. So shout out to Oprah for turning around and sitting down and listening to me because I promise you, she did not want to. (laughs) And when I went to get my coat and stuff from the coat check people, they was looking at me just like this too. They was like, you could have got somebody fired doing what you was doing. I'm like, anyway, (laughs) there's always going to be some haters. Now, the third time I went to the Oprah Winfrey show was the only time probably in my whole life where I didn't have to work for it. I didn't have to do anything. Tam had wrote a letter to the Oprah Winfrey show and was chosen. It was the best friend show with Oprah and Gail. 
and we got to go see her during the very last season of the Oprah Winfrey show. And we even got to meet Oprah's executive producer, Sari Salata, on the way into the studio. Yeah, that was a good sign. Not only did we get to go to the show, but this was the first time that I got to ask Oprah Winfrey a question. Now y'all know I raised my hand to ask a question, but Oprah looked me dead in the eye and did not call on me, but she did call on Tam. And you know what she did when she called on her? She said, my best friend got a question. And so I got to ask Oprah a question. I stumbled a little bit, but I did eventually get it out. Here go the question. I watched um, Diane Sawyer's master class and she said, people around, you need to have people around you to you know, create your best self. How has Gail oh, made you? Oh, don't get me crying. <laughs> Gail, you know, I can't even express what Gail has been to me. I mean, actually, I tried to on the Barbara Walter special and started crying. And Gail actually was in, um, we were in Australia, and she saw it. And uh, after she saw me talking about her on Barbara Walter, she called me up and goes, I wish I knew Gail King. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But, um, I, but I really, I just sat there, you know, boohooing all by myself. Because, listen, Oprah and I have been friends for a very long, very long time, over... 30 something years, and I've known that what we have is very special, but I also think a lot of people, when you have a close friend, you get what this is. But I mean, I think she, I'll answer for her. I think she knows that <laughs> she can trust me. She yeah. can trust me. She knows that I will tell her the truth, and she knows that I would do anything for her. And you know, later I found out that this was posted on Oprah.com. Like so many people ask questions, but the question that I asked Oprah was actually posted to her website. Say what? Shout out to Triska, because if it wasn't for her tagging me on Facebook, I wouldn't even know that the video was on Oprah.com. Not only did we get to go to the Best Friend Show, not only did I get to ask Oprah a question, not only was it posted on Oprah.com, but Oprah gifted the whole audience with a free trip to one of the best spas in the world, Miraval in Phoenix, Arizona. I had all kind of food I never ate before, hung out in the jacuzzi, did the swing and the prayer from 35 feet up in the air. We even seen Portia and Ellen. I was like, what's up, E? The only other time I've seen Ellen was at the Ellen DeGeneres show. So you know this place costs money. It was so wonderful that I went on Twitter and thanked Oprah personally. And you know what? She responded. And now to the final Oprah encounter where I actually got to meet her and take a photo. This time it was at Oprah's taping of Life Class in LA. And her guest on the show that day was Eon LeVanzant. I remember gifting Oprah with one of my favorite pins. As soon as I gave it to her, she knew exactly what it was. She was like, is that a uniball? I was like, how did she know? Why we get to sit right next to Oprah's sister in the front row at this taping? Look at God. What was cool about this experience was during one of the like commercial intermissions, I looked at her, pointed at her and asked for a picture with my hands and Oprah just nodded yes. Now I do have a master's degree in communication, but what I did in that moment, you can't get a degree for that. So when the show was wrapped up, Oprah was talking about how she had a wedding to go to. So everybody was, you know, filing out of the place where we were taping. And I looked at Oprah like, oh, and without saying a word, Oprah said, come on, come on. Because the staff was trying to get us up out of there, okay? But she kept her word even though she didn't have to keep her word, even though it wasn't even really a word. It was just a nod. And boom, that's how we got the picture with Oprah Winfrey. Let me show you what my mood was after this encounter. I was crip walking like Serena. <laughs> my final encounters with Oprah came via Twitter or now X. I remember live tweeting, love this conversation. You never get to hear this kind of important talk on TV. Oprah, this is why I love you so much. Own TV rocks, next chapter. Now, do you know that tweet jumped off my timeline and into an Oprah promo for next chapter? Let's take a look, shall we? Roll the clip. The biggest stars, the biggest buzz. Oprah's next chapter is all new Sunday. Another one of my tweets made it to Super Soul Sunday. I know you're all loving our Super Soul shorts because I see a lot of your posts. Thank you. And the final one was featured in a promo for Iyanla's Fix My Life. I've met Iyanla Van Zandt too, but that's for another episode. And one time when I was live tweeting, Oprah was responding to me. Say what? She responded to me again when we were watching Henrietta Lacks. I even did a Twitter takeover and live tweeted one of the shows on OWN using the owner's Twitter handle. So I've got to meet Oprah a few times in real life 
and on the World Wide Web. And she's right. God can dream a dream bigger than you. This episode is so long, I done went and got my hair braided before I finished it. <laughs> if you made it this far, thanks so much for watching.